Bits and bites. Absolutely delicious. Oh my God, this is cat food. No, but seriously, bits and bytes are the units to measure computer data. Bit is the smallest form of data, and it's basically like an on-off switch. It can be either a zero or a one, but that's it. Even basic information, like a letter of the alphabet, cannot be expressed as a bit in spite of the name alphabet. You'll need a byte, which is a series of eight bits in order to express even something as simple as a character of text. You can think of it as eight on or off switches, which can be configured in any number of different combinations to represent different values, often a letter of the alphabet or another character. For example, this is TQ for tech quickie represented in 16 bits or two bytes. And this is a smiley face represented in 16 bits or two bytes. But you're a sophisticated guy. You might need to store data that's more complicated than a single letter of the alphabet. And the simple answer is you're gonna need more bytes. By the way, these taste awful. For example, even a text document that contains only three characters would need more than one byte of data to represent it. That is why we have prefixes like kilo, mega, and giga to refer to much larger file sizes. I mean, otherwise in casual conversation, we'd have to say things like, Oh, hey man, how big is that song? Oh, around uh, 3,521,362 bytes. Or you could just say three and a half megs. So when do you use bits and when do you use bytes? The general rule that I use is bits for interface speed, bytes for data storage. So here's an example. Your internet service provider has a plan for you that's 100 megabit per second, and you have a file that's 100 megabytes. Don't get confused. You're not gonna be able to download a 100 megabyte file size in one second with that plan. It'll actually take more like about eight seconds because 100 megabit is around 12.5 megabytes. Where it gets really confusing. Ah! Sometimes they represent speeds and bytes too. Like when you transfer files on your computer from one folder to another one. So the best way to keep from getting confused is to follow a couple of simple rules. Number one rule is the big B, anytime it's denoted is for bytes, the bigger unit. And a small B is for bits, which is the smaller unit. Big letter, big unit, small letter, small unit. And rule number two is you can use this simple and approximate, very approximate, not correct, conversion, where you take a number that you read in bits and you divide it by 10 to get bytes. For example, that internet service provider that advertises 100 megabit per second, in theory, 12.5 megabytes, not gonna happen in the real world due to network protocol inefficiencies or any other snafus that might occur in the advertised speed. So it'll probably be more like 10 megabytes per second, even if your service provider is being honest about their speeds. Speaking of reading, this video is brought to you by audible.com. I've heard, well, and experienced, that you can download ebooks from the megabits. Actually, no, I'm just kidding. You can actually download books from the internet. You can listen to them, whether it's on your smartphone, on your couch, in your car while you're commuting, or whatever else the case may be. You can even get a free ebook by visiting audible.com slash techquickie, where you can download pretty much anything you want. I meant to read this book, and instead what I ended up doing is picking up the ebook because even though it'll take about twice as long to listen to this book as it will to read it, I don't have the time to sit down and dedicate to reading it, whereas I can listen to it while I'm doing other things. The other cool thing about this one is the fact that the Audible ebook is read by Jim Collins himself, which means he added a little bit of insight and tailored the experience to the listening version as opposed to the reading version, which was very, very cool. Now, I'd like to change things up a little bit for my next ebook, and I'd love for you guys to check out the Audible bestsellers list and leave your suggestions in the comments in this video. I would like to try something that is entertaining as opposed to business oriented, and I'd like to try something that was read by someone other than the author so that I can have that experience as well. And as always, guys, don't forget to like this video, share this video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe.